So, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, uh, titled The Open Air Graph, an Open Infrastructure for and by the Community, which is organized in the context of the Open Access Week's theme, Community Over Commercialization. Today, uh, we have uh, Paolo Mangi, Open Air's Chief Technical Officer, who will provide an in-depth exploration of the community-driven aspects of the Open Air Graph. During the presentation, we kindly ask you that you keep your microphones muted and your cameras off. For the Q&A session, please feel free to unmute and turn on your camera if you'd like to actively participate, or you can also submit your questions in the chat. Please note that the session will be recorded and if you wish to participate in the discussion session but prefer not to be included in the recording, let us know in the chat and we'll ensure your contribution is edited out. So, Paolo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the intro. So, um, let me start uh, if I find again the presentation, because that's essential. I would say. Okay, here we go. So welcome today. Uh, since it's not so many of us, I see, uh, of course, you can write your questions in uh, the chat, but I would say that if you want, you can raise your hand because we have some time ahead of us. So uh, we can make it more informal, let's say. Um, okay, so the presentation is about the open air graph. And uh, I will try to highlight how uh, our graph is quite, uh, let's say, uh, unusual in the way it commits uh, to the community and in the way the community can interact with it or actually be part uh, of its whole operation and production. So um, let me first start with a generic description of what the graph is, because I think it's very important. Uh, so. I'm sure you've heard the notion of uh, you've heard of the notion of scholarly knowledge graphs. That's what the open air graph is about. Uh, now this uh, nomenclature here, so these SKGs are uh, is becoming a trend at least in Europe, um, and they are describing collections of metadata records that uh, are themselves describing entities uh, in the research life cycle, like uh, research products, like organizations people, services, whatever has to do with the overall uh, scientific workflow and life cycle. And of course, also it's about the relationships between such entities because we really like to put them in a scenario, in a context. So knowing which publication is linked to data or which data has been produced by which service uh, or is stored into which service and so on. So that's uh, a very important aspect in, in open science as we'll see afterwards. And uh, the open air graph, uh, especially, is trying to do this at a global level, as we will see. Try to make all the metadata open, CC0. Uh, we want this graph to be complete in the sense that we are trying to collect as much as possible all sources trusted by scientists in their uh, production chain, if we want to call it like this. So this will include also their institutional repositories, their libraries, and not just uh, the publishers, as well as the data archives, the software archives, and so on. We want the graph to be deduplicated, and that's because we kind of collect and aggregate metadata from so many sources that it's very much likely that we're going to collect the same objects from different places where they have been rightly um, placed for the uh, purpose of preservation or the purpose of reporting to an institution, uh, for example. That we want all of this to be transparent, so we are actually publishing everything about by work, our workflows our decision-making, our algorithms, uh, et cetera. And uh, at the same time, we're keeping track uh, of the provenance of every single piece of information we get from which data source, from which algorithm that we are applying and so on. Uh, and this is part of the data. Uh, we want this to be participatory. And that's again, where the community comes into place in the sense that we are uh, collecting feedback, but we're also engaging with the community itself. Uh, to improve the graph and its quality and also to operate it. We want it to be decentralized in the sense that we are very much aware of the fact that the open air graph is a collection of metadata that we are collecting today, constructing. But then uh, whatever is new about this data 
should be stored when it is persisted, which is in the data repositories, the libraries, the data repositories, and so on. So if we find new metadata, we have the tools actually to inject this metadata back uh, into preservation places, which are known to the community. And of course, we want it to be trusted. So we want users to trust it. Uh, we are ORCID members, and we are uh, connecting these two worlds uh, of authoritativeness, uh, authoritativeness for users and the metadata that we produce. Now, this is a view of the data model so that you have an idea what kind of entities we're dealing with. Uh, at the center, we have the research products to which we can attach any sort of indicators, uh, any sort, meaning citation count, uh, popularity, influence, uh, usage, downloads, and views. Uh, whatever we believe is actually important and it can be used to identify quantitatively and qualitatively the life of a research product. And the research product is of the kind that you see here on the right. So we kind of made it clear. So publications, data, and software, um, which are overall accepted as uh, meta concepts by the community and across different disciplines. And then we have other research products, which may include uh, all the products that do not actually fall precisely on these first three categories. Then, of course, we have persons, the authors, but could also be uh, project uh, principal investigators and so on, together with uh, the ORCID identifiers, if we manage to find one. Uh, we have the data sources I mentioned before for provenance, so we track every single bit of information. We have the organizations that are linked to the resource products in terms of the organizations that are, uh, are the affiliations of the authors of resource products. And of course, we have the administrative side, which is actually crucial for monitoring, which is uh, the ones that is formed by the hierarchy of projects, streams, and funders. Okay. Um, some data model features, just again, to have a clear idea of what's going on. We embed all sorts of indicators, and these are the ones that we're uh, embedding today. Uh, citations, of course, come from many indexes, not just Scorchy, but we have Crossref, of course, but open citations. We are also inferring citations from PDFs that we uh, download and, and mine. We are open to any persistent identifiers, so we're not focusing on the OI only. Uh, we have all sorts of persistent identifiers out there, again, trusted by scientists. And we keep stable identifier in the graph. So it means that we're trying to assign identifiers to groups of objects that we are connecting together um, via, via the duplication with the unique identifiers to make, to make our graph reusable in different uh, versions uh, over time. Here is an idea of the production chain. So on the left side, you have the data sources we are collecting from. Some of these uh, obey to what we call the OCDA guidelines. So we, these are, are, again, another community effort. So defined by the community. We define together with the repository managers and so on, what, uh, what is the best way or what could be the best way, which are the standards to be used to export metadata. We define these together and we started implementing. Uh, we implemented them as part as modules of known platforms like this space or Dataverse, you will find uh, already out of the box uh, an implementation of the guidelines. Or we followed up with, uh, with special cases, uh, ad hoc implementations of repository platforms to make them uh, implemented. More than a thousand repositories today are compliant and we directly collect from them. Uh, many instrumental data sources, of course, are not uh, uh, compliant to the guidelines because they have their own and all of their own life cycle. And I mean, the largest registries like Crossref, or data sites itself, ORCID and so on. And for those, we have a very special workflows that we manage. Once we aggregate the data, we enrich it by mining. We have more than 45,000 uh, uh, millions, sorry, PDFs that have been downloaded, which we are mining constantly to enrich the graph with further links, especially. So we find links between publications and projects or funders. We go to the fine grain size of the project, uh, publication data and software, uh, publication to publication, of course, the user and traditional citation links, um, publication organization, and so on, plus fields of science and growth and sustainable development goals. Then after this phase, we deduplicate. So we bring things together. Uh, we do it following the simple logic. We want to use the graph for monitoring for impact, for assessment of science. So we tend to bring together also different versions of the same object. So to us, a preprint and the published version of an article are the same 
uh, scientific effort. So we don't consider them as different. But of course, we keep pointers to both. So that actually gives us, in many cases, the open access version of uh, a toll gated or closed publication. And we can use it, of course, to enrich the two graphs. We uh, keep it together with the original data source, with the original resource type, so we know which is the published and which is not, and so on. Then we enrich it by inference again. I'm not delving into the details here, but we propagate uh, information and metadata from one object to another. If there is a relationship that allows to do so, we finalize it and we publish it to the public via APIs and dumps. So there are different classes of data sources, as you can see here. Today, we collect from 2.5 thousand directly and indirectly 140,000 because sometimes we collect from aggregators, which behind, uh, of course, uh, are referring to another list of data sources, which we track. So we have an idea of when we collect the metadata, if it's an aggregator, what is behind the aggregator. And we are collecting, as you can see, from many classes. So the usual guys, the usual suspects, Crossref, and UIJs, uh, archive, uh, UK PubMed, but then we go well beyond. So we collect from other graphs, uh, open citations, Microsoft, we used to collect from a paywall. Uh, we collect from repositories like GitHub, Software Heritage, Elixir in the life sciences uh, and so on. We collect from several funders, uh, from research infrastructures, the data sources, etc. Now, this is an idea of the numbers that we have today uh, after the duplication, because before the duplication, we have almost as twice uh, of this content. And as you can see, uh, we reach almost the 200 million publications, 64 million research data, and so on and so on. Also 3.4 million grants, which we use for mining, full text mining, as I, I told you before, and around 350,000 organizations, which are in turn linked to the rest. We publish the data by Azinodo. So this is uh, every six months, we publish a data set actually many data sets. So you can collect the whole graph, but also slices of it. One of the most sought after is, for example, the list of projects that we are collecting from all sources uh, together with the funders and so on, or the list of products that are funded by the European Commission. These are another very much downloaded set and the open air graph itself, as you can see, uh, well, that was two months ago. So probably uh, now it's much higher. And of course we have an API and which is fully documented. You can access from there. You have a limit in the number of results, but it's open and you can use it. Now, an example, just to give you an idea, we do monitoring and we use the graph to do monitoring for open science. Uh, so it's not just about peer reviewed publications <clears throat> as in most traditional systems, we take a look at what's beyond. So uh, we, we are including, because why is not just modern peer review? Because we really believe that uh, the content in institutional repositories is important, especially with the new lines of um, research assessment as drafted, uh, as drawn by the Quara. So the idea is to evaluate, to have an only comprehensive view of what a researcher does. So it's not just about purely scientific uh, innovation, but it's also about uh, collaboration, it's also about uh, consolidation, definition of standards, patents. So it's a number of things that are uh, uh, to be measured on with different kinds of indicators around the scientist. Uh, and uh, we also have open science practices to take into account. So if in the past we were measuring the impact based on the quality, the scientific quality, today we go beyond the explicit scientific quality, but it's also again networking, collaboration quality. But then we also have open science practices, so how good we are as scientists, as organizations, for example, in implementing such guidelines. For example, uh, the usage of persistent identifiers or the amount of links that I'm specifying between publications and data or the number of research data sets that I'm <clears throat> producing and publishing in a proper way, in a fair way, and so on. So this is very important. And this is why the graph we are building is becoming more and more uh, central and pivotal for this kind of experiences and experimentations. Um, yeah, we can skip the slide. So these are, for example, numbers that we have that give you an idea of the links that allow this kind, this kind of reasoning to be implemented. Um, so citations are the usual ones available to many graphs out there, Crossref, OpenAlex, these are the same uh, public, uh, the same citations that are 
be collected from the same sources for actually contributing to a reach, for example, open citations via the mining that we process on our uh, PDFs, the ones that we managed to download. Right? By the way, we download PDFs when they are open access, of course, or when we have special agreements, bilateral agreements with publishers. And we have some with Elsevier, uh, uh, Springer, uh, ACM, et cetera. Okay. Um, uh, as you can see, there's a quite high number of links that we are identifying between publications and data. Again, via direct data sources like data site, uh, like repositories, or via the mining that we are performing. We're sharing these links now with the data site citation corpus because we want, again, to be open as much as possible, as well as links between publications and software, which are <clears throat> quite rare. The majority of these, in fact, are inferred by us. So we find in the publications links to the software uh, in the repository, we build the metadata around that software and we create a, a, a node, let's say in the graph that represents it to uh, uh, reificate the links and the existence of such pieces of software, which would otherwise disappear uh, buried into the text. Uh, so you can see the link to grants follows the same process of data collection, metadata collection and mining, and they're uh, quite high. Uh, and so on, and all the rest. You will take a look at the numbers if you have time when I share the slides. We have several consumers among researchers who are using our data to publish uh, uh, articles, explore uh, the domain, and so on, uh, but also with service providers. We are, of course, one of the uh, central services of the EOS, European Open Science Cloud, but we are also uh, interacting with many companies like Springer, Scopus, also SMEs that are using our data. We serve funders. European Commission, uh, CT are just one example. We have more than 30 funders that are using our data for the purpose of monitoring, and we serve organizations. Uh, we had very nice experiences with the Open Access Monitor in Ireland recently, and uh, with the Netherlands, uh, worldwide, but there's plenty. So check, take a look at our website, and you'll find everything. For and by the community, that was the title of the presentation. I tried in these few slides to uh, summarize the whole thing. Um, what makes us peculiar, let's say, in this domain? First of all, we are community governed. So we are a no-profit company, uh, but it's based on membership. Okay, so any member can participate to uh, the definition of the roadmap, to the steering uh, uh, of our service and decision-making by participating to a steering committee. Uh, we have specific ones dedicated to the services, to the technical approach, and... Uh, via proposals, by understanding, we can, of course, keep the graph on track based on the direction that we all want to take together. And of course, members of the team can join uh, also the construction and the operation of the graph uh, if they have adequate resources, good ideas, and, and so on. And this is currently the case. So the graph is uh, operated by four organizations uh, with the help of many others around. Some of them are not even members of Open Air, but we, uh, uh, use their feedback and their experience to make sure things are done right. Uh, then we play an important role in community alignment in the sense that we believe that we are not the ones uh, as a company having to define uh, what are the um, standards, the global alignment issues, and uh, for example, impose uh, uh, a good practice and so on. So we engage a lot through our NOAAs, which are the emotional open access. They should be open science today, desks, and the community at large, especially with the librarians and the repositories, to uh, agree on the standards, on the metadata formats, and so on, that should be used uh, in the graph, in the repositories, and so on. Um, so we defined the open air guidelines. They are now part of the EOSC uh, guidelines and interoperability framework. We are now working on the SKG interoperability framework in the context of the uh, RDA. So you're all welcome to participate because these are and must be a community effort and decisions. And of course, we adapt our technology to it, okay? Then community involvement. Uh, if we're not looking at the members of Open Air, of course, we have a strategic look with, to our users, our consumers, and they are involved again in our life cycle. So first of all, we seek collaborations constantly with external research groups and so on. You may have understood from what I said that producing such a graph requires a huge number of skills. Uh, 
we have a lot of people working uh, in the graph uh, construction chain, but th these are never enough. We cannot know everything about everything. And this is why we are collaborating with several institutions. We have Aurora behind uh, University uh, of Amsterdam. We have uh, Athena Research Center. We have uh, universities in, uh, in, in Australia and many other colleagues with which we are trying to understand the quality of the graph and or improve it and also take their own algorithms and embed them into the production chain, of course, given the, the visibility that this deserves to make this data good for all. Uh, we collect end users, we feedback. So we have, of course, help desk. We receive a huge amount of requests on why, on the whys and the hows the data has been produced, if it can be uh, improved or not. We also allow users to log in by logging into the portal to not only take advantage of the ORCID uh, login because you are connected to your ORCID profile through OpenAir, so you can actually throw their data, software, publications, everything we find, but also to collect feedback or enrichment. So as a user, you can add information to the metadata. You can add links, for example, tell us if your data is linked to specific project effort uh, or not, and so on. Uh, you can also, uh, if you are included into a specific list of curators, contribute to the overall quality of the graph in a more authoritative sense, for example, deduplicating uh, organizations across different persistent identifiers and domains. We have specific tools for that. And then we have tools uh, to feedback users about the quality of their, say, metadata. Uh, these are actually under construction now, so they will be uh, ready early next year. But we also have tools to feedback data sources repositories on how to enrich their metadata collections. Um, these are already uh, implemented instead. So, um, the basic idea is that if you're a repository and you're or a data source and you're giving data to open air, what you can do is to subscribe to special kinds of notifications and get back uh, events about how to enrich your metadata records. We found ORCID identifiers, we found open access versions of your stuff, we found links to data sets that or to projects that you didn't have, we can send it to you. Because we really believe this is the place uh, where these data should be persisted for others to use in turn, right? So you're not the one who's supposed to keep it forever. Um, for transparency, we have uh, a, date, a website with a full documentation where we document everything we do. So everything, every single step. Uh, we uh, think uh, also thanks to user feedback that is in the right balance between not too much technical and not too much uh, uh, high level, let's say. Um, you can find also links to publications that we had, uh, but we reached the level of mappings, for example, how we define a mapping for data site or whatever. So you can find a lot of info there. We'd we'll be pleased, in fact, if you uh, can take a look and if you can tell us what you think and give us feedback through the forum. Because as I said before, we are uh, very transparent. So we, we want users to interact with us and uh, uh, this interaction should be open to others to check and intervene. At the moment, unfortunately, there's a strong usage of the help desk. So we receive everything by mail and this remains uh, secret <laughs> and not open to the rest. So please uh, make sure your inquiries are sent through the forum. This will actually improve a lot. Uh, uh, the life of others and also ours, because most of the time, hope we'll have to repeat times only once. Uh, sorry, we have to reply only once and share our responses with the rest. So, thank you for your attention. Uh, I'm open to questions now. So, if you have any, I'd be pleased to do it. I hope you could hear me so far. We could hear you, Paolo. Thank you very much. Okay, Stefania. Thank you. Maybe also here we could share um, the our community calls. So as Paolo mentioned, um, 
we really rely on the community for their feedback. And every month we host a community call for the graph where we dive into new developments, um, use cases, APIs, and all those things. And I can share that link here in the chat for anybody who would like to join. They're open for, for all, to, all to join. Okay, so. Uh, oh, and we have a question. I, in chat. I... Um, so we have a question from Victor. Um, yes, Victor, is, is this you or Roger Federer in the picture, first of all? If it's you, you definitely look like Roger Federer in this picture. Okay, that is the famous tennis player. <laughs> okay, so uh, yes, uh, there, is, there, there are ways. So if you're interested, we, uh, we would be welcome to take your CV and take a look and have a chat. Uh, if what you're looking is uh, for a position, okay? Uh, and Karl Marx. <laughs> yes, I guess you're the one on the left. Yes. Uh, uh, so if you if you would like to send us a CV, of course, uh, we can take uh, a look and have a chat. Sure. Uh, maybe what I can do is to show you something more, just to give you more of a concrete example of what you can uh, see. So I just want to be clear. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, can yes, we can. Pal. Okay. okay, so this is Explore, right? Uh, I've uh, run a query for a data journal survey in Mangi, so because I know uh, this paper is uh, mine, okay? And you can see what I get back is both uh, research data and the, the paper that comes with it, okay? So uh, if I click here, for example, I get everything that I can get about this paper. Uh, there are eight versions about it, which have been deduplicated and put together. And you see they are on different places. This one on top is my institutional repository, where if I put it and we are collected in open air as part of the aggregation. I also put it in Zenodo, so you can find it there. Um, and as you can see, it's available through many other sources. Okay? And it's been duplicated already through many other sources. So the result that you see here, this record is basically the combination of all this. And what you can see is that I have related material with it. And these two are the, well, these are tables basically where we have collected uh, all the statistics about our investigations and you can find them uh, by clicking on top of it and downloading them. These are in Figshare. There is another copy in uh, uh, Zenodo. And as you can see from here, I can go back to, to the other journal, okay? Uh, sorry, to the um, publication. I can measure citations. I can measure... Uh, popularity, influence, and impulse. These are different indicators that are coming from uh, another uh, institution we are collaborating with, okay? And uh, we have inferred fields of science, and I know which are the projects that have funded this paper explicitly. So if I click on one of these, for example, Open Air Plus, I am forwarded to the page of the project, okay? And the page of the project will show me uh, everything about that project. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not going there. Let me open it in a different page. I know it is, but I cannot see the page. It's another tab. Wait a second. Okay. So this is the Open Air Plus project. You can find all the information that we have collected from the European Commission website together with everything about it, all the publications that are linked to it, the research data, the research software, other research products, and the partners, and each of them, of course, is an organization. By clicking on it, I get to the organization page, okay? Uh, I get statistics, uh, if there is one, also the data management plan, but there is none, okay? This was before it was obligatory. 
And here, for example, if I click on publications, I get everything about it, okay? So all this is possible thanks to the information that we collect today uh, in the graph from several sources. Uh, that gives you just an idea. Of course, you can also, I'm taking this one as an example, uh, see it from a different perspective. So if you're a funder, that's a monitoring dashboard from the funder. So you can tell, and this is the European Commission, is the only one that is open. Typically funders want to keep it secret. So it's a private uh, dashboard and you cannot have access to it. And from here, you have a number of uh, open science indicators. Okay, uh, how things are going with the description, of course, of what this means. Um, you have uh, also impact, research and frequency, downloads, citations, uh, sustainable development goals. You can see the collaborations. Uh, you can see also overlapsing funding, co-funded research output. So it means from the commission and other funders. Uh, so you can take, let's say, and you can have a view that is only comprehensive of what is going on, okay? And there are many, many indicators that we're producing, of course, but uh, uh, these are the ones that we have suggested and other standards to all. Um, let me see, uh, for example, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we also had article processing charge and fairness. This should be operational now, it wasn't before. These are queries that take some time because they are on a huge amount of data. But here you can tell, for example, the pervasive usage of uh, persistent identifiers, how many of the publications have been using persistent identifiers. Uh, you have uh, by P type, so organization by persistent identifiers, how many we have with a license, with an ORCID ID, you see, the, the, st the stats are telling us that many don't come with it, okay? So it's uh, uh, publications with an abstract because we consider it important for fairness. So many aspects can be evaluated here, thanks to the uh, information that we are uh, aggregated, uh, we are aggregating. Um, and that's it. I mean, it could go on for a long time, but I just wanted to give it a, for the stretch. So, uh, do you have further questions? Okay. Anyway, you don't have to ask these questions today. You can just contact me by mail whenever you want. Uh, I'll share the slides, actually. My colleagues here will. And uh, thank you. Yes, Paolo, we will share the slides and the recording to everyone who participated and registered to our webinar. So you will have the time to review it again. And if you come back with questions, we are happy to answer. So Just one question, thank maybe. You. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome, Diana. Or Diana. Uh, depends. Yeah. So there are no more questions. Anyone? So Victor, I'll be waiting for your CV. Then you go back. I, I think we can conclude the webinar. Or would you like to give a few minutes if someone comes up with a question? Okay. So thank you everyone for joining our webinar today and have a nice weekend. Thank you for organizing this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.